No. But my title doesn't matter. I'll just say. <laughs> no title. Okay, no title. All right. Do you remember the moment when you came online? When you first started remembering things? For me, I remember it very clearly because it was a lady at this little burger joint in Battle Mountain, Nevada, giving me my first 45, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And I remember wearing that record out along with all of my dad's records. And from, from that moment on, just being totally into music, just loving rock and roll music and everything that had to do with it. I remember growing up listening to my dad's records, The Who, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Thin Lizzy, all of these great records that just started me off right. Now, music, like I said, was always a big part of the, the enjoyment of my life. The next great memory I have is when I got my own record player from my grandparents. I got to go and pick my own records. Now, I picked my records like any true rock fan would. I looked on the cover for The Mental Patient in the Metal Mask, The Helicopters, The Devils. Anything that looked cool on the record cover, that was going home with me. So, because of that, I got a lot of great records and I started down what eventually became my favorite kind of music, which is heavy metal. I started with Quiet Riot, Night Ranger, and I ended up going to my cousin's house. And I told them, I like all this heavy metal, but I don't like any of this devil music. I said, I, I think you'll like this one. And they pulled out Motley Crue, Shout of the Devil. I was like, no, no way, you're not going to get me to listen to that thing. Then, no, 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 just listen. And from the second that record started until the second that record ended, I was enthralled. And I've been enthralled with that band ever since. It's been one of the greatest connections I've ever felt to any artist with, with that band. And I, I learned one of the huge lessons in life from that. And that, that is to appreciate diversity in different people. Now, I was a very close-minded kid who, I, I looked at these people and I saw the tattoos and I saw the piercings and I saw these guys that were 6'6 six, six with 6-inch six heels and I was just like, oh my god, get out of here. But I really, really appreciated them both as people and as artists the more I got to know them and it really changed my scope on life. My love of music led me into opportunities to figure out the things that I liked to do with my life. For instance, my first business was selling records. I worked at a drugstore and they had a little shelf of tapes at the front of the store. And I thought, you know, I could sell a lot of tapes for these guys. So I went back to my system from my childhood. I started picking all the records with the crazy covers and they had done it they had done a big favor for me because they put these little stickers right about my senior year in high school on the records that said parental advisory <laughs> i knew if i ordered those that they were going to sell like hotcakes i could sell anything with that sticker on it to any kid in the town so i i literally would order all the stuff i knew people would like and then anything that had a sticker showing on the on the order for it so i would put this my record store was doing really 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 good i was selling probably five times what they had sold every single month before when it came to the attention of my boss who happens to be the clergy of a local church in addition to being the owner of the drugstore that he was supplying all of the evil music into town. <laughs> now, I learned a lesson, I learned a few lessons from that. The, fir the first lesson being appreciate diversity and realize that there are people that will never appreciate diversity. The second being know your audience because that almost got me fired. <laughs> and the third
third being, follow your own voice, because I would rather lose that job than lose that music. The final thing that music did for me is it helped me to see the whole world, to see the difference. <laughs> Again, I grew up in a small town. I, the only people I knew growing up were white or Hispanic. I did not know anybody of any other race. There, there was very little diversity. Almost everybody I knew was, worked in the mines or worked on a ranch. My first, my first real concert, I decided <coughs> that I was going to go to Golden Gate Park to the Free Tibet concert. Now being in San Francisco in July on the beach, I was thinking, oh, that's going to be really warm. So we packed up our best beach gear to go to San Francisco. <laughs> to say that it was a culture shock when we got there was the understatement of the century. Freezing fog covering the entire Golden Gate Park. 300,000 people crowded in on this in this little area, and the first th the first people selling things at the side of the road, strawberry ganja buddies, brown acid, get your hits, get your hits. <laughs> I was just completely blown away. I, to say it was a culture shock, again, understatement. And I was surprised even more two hours later when I was completely dressed in hemp from head to toe so that I wouldn't freeze. The next few days were even more enlightening, learning about Tibet and the horrible things, the horrible human rights violations that are going on over there, that have been going on over there for 20 years. I did not buy a Chinese good for three years. I avoided anything that said made in China for three years after I saw what they did to those people. And I felt a connection. It wasn't just a show, it wasn't just music, but that music was connecting us in the world together. And so, music was my first awakening as a child, but music has continued to be my awakening throughout my life. Mr. Toastmaster. Happy